I agree with most of what you're saying. I think that the only place, and I saw this when I was reading the book, I, there was a little, there were these little places where I wanted to push back on, on your thesis a little bit. And it started right away at the beginning when you mentioned that St. Paul talks about, of course, this, this passage that you mentioned, that there is no or Jew or Greek, there is no man or woman. But then there are other texts where St. Paul talks about a natural hierarchy between man and woman, for example. And I remember the way you phrased it was that he doesn't dare to go to the end of his own of his own thinking, let's say. He doesn't want to push it to the end. And I think that for me, that is the place where I'm not sure I, that I, I agree in the sense that if you, if, like I said, I see even in the story of Christ, for example, there's a reason why Christ is shown as entering Jerusalem in glory before he's crucified, right? That he's hailed as king and then he's crucified as a criminal. Right, those two images are there to kind of act as this this joining of opposites. So the cross is there, yes, as this idea that the last is the first, and the and the weak can you know that there's a joining of these opposites. But there's also the moment right before where he's hailed as as the king who, and coming into the city, and we see that all through. In my vision, when we see that all through Christianity, where, for example. Christianity never does create, at least at the beginning, doesn't create a social revolution. It, it, the Christians martyrs die and they die and they die and then the emperor converts. And now then you find this strange balance uh, and you see the balance happen over and over. You know, the, the, the Germans and the, the northerners come in, they kill, they kill, they kill, then they convert and then they become knights and they integrate the hierarchy where at least the ideal of the knight is to use power and authority to protect the weak. So then you have this balance of this idea that yes, we have an hierarchy. Yes, we have power. Yes, we have even empire, but the purpose of empire is to protect the weak. And so it's not the weak, it's not the same as the weak take come, rising up and taking power. That I don't see. I don't see neither in the Christian story nor in the early church or the early martyrs or, and I see that you frame it, like for example, you frame the Gregorian, uh, reforms that kind of like that uh well i don't know go ahead well i i i think i mean I, clearly christ's crucifixion you know christ's death on the cross would be meaningless if he were not the king yeah, yeah. i mean otherwise it's it's nothing and paul yeah, it's just says, a di guy dying on a cross. Says, you know unless christ is risen then then, then what we believe is folly. You know, it's mm. nonsense. It, 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 it has no hope at all. Um, so it, it is fundamental to Christ's mission that he is indeed uh, God as, as, as well as, as man. Otherwise, there's, there's, there's nothing there. So yes, absolutely. Um, and I, I completely agree that, um, you know, Paul is not interested in preaching social revolution. Uh, that, that's not what he's about. And I think that he's not absolutely certain what he is about. And, and <laughs> I, 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 and, and I mean that, you know, it, that, that c coming from other, other way, you know, but I suppose particularly Jewish and, and Muslim, the immense bodies of law, um, you know, whether it's the Talmud or the Sunnah or whatever, um, what's, what, what, what's really striking about Paul is that his letters are not meant to be prescriptive like that. They, they, they are, in a sense, dramatic monologues. You know, they, they, they are quite close to, say, Cicero's speeches. Um, you know, you, when, you write, when he's writing to the Galatians, you, you sense what the other guy might say. You know, as you do when you read a Cicero speech, you only get Cicero's, okay. But, but what you also get with Paul is the sense that he's, he's, he's thinking aloud. So that's in that sense that it's a kind of dramatic monologue. And you constantly feel, and that's why I found so powerful about it, he, he is wrestling with something that he cannot put into words. He's, kind of, he's struggling to compute what it means. And my guess is that whether he has a vision on the road to Damascus or not, I mean, what you agreed, I don't know whether we can trust that account in Acts as, as being a, a, a historical record, but something like that clearly does happen. He clearly does have some overwhelming experience in which he comes to realize that this crucified criminal mm. is is in some way god and i can only assume that he comes to that conclusion because he has the revelation mm. and then he he has to think well what's going on here i mean how whoa, whoa. <laughs> and 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 then he he he's a he's a, a highly literate man mm. 
steeped in, in, in the scriptures of his people. And so he goes through and he reads the scriptures and it's reading the scriptures that gives him the kind of sense of, of what's gone on. He, he interprets the scriptures retrospectively through his experience. And so he then has to try and formulate what this means. And the letters seem to me a, a, an attempt to try and explain that. Mm -hmm. And that's why they are so incredibly fertile for future generations, is that in a sense, Paul himself isn't entirely clear what it is that he's trying to say. But because they are kind of marinated in the incredible richness of the, um, the Jewish scriptural tradition, and also, of course, the fact that Paul is, a, is, is, is um, someone moving around the Roman world, this globalized um, world, and he has a working knowledge of, um, of, of, of uh, he, he writes in Greek, he, he knows about Stoicism. All of this is a kind of blends together to create this incredible, well, I, I mean, I kind of think of it as a depth charge that goes off underneath yeah. the fabric of, of, the, of the Roman world. And it, it ripples outwards in ways that perhaps Paul would, would find completely shocking. Um, and so that that thing, you know, the the um, there's no Greek or Jew, no man or woman, no slave or free, which which seems so fundamental to the way that the, that, that we in the West now think and organise ourselves morally, ethically, societally. Of course, the the key phrase in, in that is in Christ Jesus. Yeah. You know, it's not a manifesto for social revolution, <laughs> but but the potential is there. You know, yeah, yeah, you can see, and those ripples go spilling out and spilling out and spilling out. Or it's an acorn, you know, it's mm. a tiny acorn from which this great oak would grow. And part, again, part of the power of Christianity is that it lends itself so prodigiously to metaphor, to parable. I mean, that's the other great thing is that is is it, it's. I hope I don't just focus on Paul because there's also the parables, the power of those parables to effect change and in a way they are even more influential so i the the last chapter you know i begin with the migration crisis in europe where you have angela merkel saying yeah okay come on in and victor orban saying no don't come in you're a bunch of muslims we're defending christian europe let's put up the um let's put up the barbed wire fence um merkel merkel is clearly inspired by the by the parable of the samaritan mm -hmm. um you know the the whole of this transformative convulsive episode that had such an impact on on uh, on Europe is ultimately due to a, a short story. Interesting. 